Good. Hi, everybody. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> this is our face or first time doing Lakata Live with, with Pat and I. We came to you last week with Keith and Mary, and so this is our first, first time hosting. So hopefully you'll be patient with us as we kind of update you on some market stats and talk to you about different things going on in the community and answer any questions that you have. So feel free to to type away and we'll try to answer them as we can. So primarily what we have planned is just to talk about the real estate market in Lake of the Woods. And as Lauren mentioned, just give you some information about what events we're aware of that are going to be coming up soon, starting with our shred event on Saturday from 11 to two. So I want to just take a minute to talk about that because I got some really exciting news that in addition to the shred truck that will be in our office parking lot in the Food Lion Shopping Center parking lot from 11 to 2 on Saturday, um, a Kona ice truck will be there from 1 to 2. Taco Tuesday will be there with their food truck um, beginning at 11. And there will be a fire truck because from Lake of the Woods, I'm assuming it's gonna be engine 29 because all proceeds um, from your donations for the shredding will be given to Lake of the Woods Fire and Rescue. So we're so excited about that. And then I just heard a couple days ago that the shelter, Orange County Animal Shelter, will be bringing a few dogs so hopefully we can get some dogs new homes as well. Oh, that sounds like fun. And I think the weather looks like it should be a great day. So hopefully it's a few days out, but hopefully the, the forecast will be great and we can get out and get some sun and we can't wait to see everybody. Absolutely. That's one thing that I am really looking forward to. Lauren and I both have had our first vaccines and we're looking forward to getting our second one. So very soon. <laughs> yeah, we feel like we'll be able to live life a little more fully, being fully vaccinated. But of course, still have to do everything you can to stop the spread. Yeah, absolutely. So with that said, let's start with the most recent statistics, and then I will go back to what happened in the month of March. So I'm gonna to talk to you just a little bit about April and what's happened in April, um, specifically with Lake of the Woods right now. Of course, if you would like stats on other areas, we'd be happy to talk to you about those too. But today I'm just gonna focus a little bit on Lake of the Woods. So as of this morning, there are only 13 active listings in Lake of the Woods. That's 13, you heard that correctly. Of those 13, eight of those are new construction. So that what that means to you is they are to be built. So if you came into the office today and wanted to see every listing available in Lake of the Woods, you wanted to set up an appointment and walk through them, I could really only take you into five different houses. And that's five houses in all price range. Um, as far as active or, um, active under contract or pending, there are currently 59 homes that are um, under contract or, or pending in Lake of the Woods. And of those, 11 of those are new construction. So uh, as far as April, there have been 13 closings in Lake of the Woods, 13 homes have gone to settlement and year to date, there has been 80 settlements in Lake of the Woods so far. Lauren, um, sometimes this is what I've been asked several times. What's the difference between active under contract and pending? Can you elaborate on that? Sure. So once we accept a ratified contract, we're either going to mark that house as active under contract or pending. So active under contract means there's certain contingencies that have been built into that contract, whether it's a home inspection as a contingency, financing, an appraisal, those are all different contingencies um, that, are, that are built into that contract. So we would mark it active under contract. And sometimes when a house is marked active under contract, the sellers will allow showings and possibly even allow a backup contract to be accepted and ratified. If you see something that's marked pending, 
It's most likely because it doesn't have any of those contingencies and could be a cash offer. So there's not gonna be financing involved typically. There's no home inspection. There's probably not an appraisal. It's a good solid contract. We don't allow showings typically and it's just marked pending because it's nothing is a sure deal until you're walking away from the settlement table, but it's, it's a very solid contract. That's absolutely correct. And the one thing that I would like to bring up regarding that is some of the aggregators out there like the Zillow's and the Redfin's, Realtor.com, do not differentiate between active under contract and pending. They may just all say pending when in reality there are still contingencies that need to be met. That's correct. Um, okay, so what I would like to do then is talk to you a little bit about what happened during the month of March in Lake of the Woods. And this is for the full month. Listings were up over 78% over um, last month, which is over February, I'm sorry. So they were up 78% over February, but only up 17% um, from the prior year. As far as pendings or active under contract are concerned, from last month, they were up 52%. And from last year, from March of last year, up 58%. And now closed sales. This is interesting. <laughs> closed sales were up over last month as well as over last year, both up 13%. So here's where it gets really interesting. And this is the median sold price. The median sold price is now 305,000 in Lake of the Woods. That was up 6.6% from last month and up 10.9% over the same time last year. So March of last year, it was 275. Today, it is 305. So according to, again, back in March, there were 18 active listings Homes, the average days on the market, only 10 days. The average five year March average was 56. So you can see what a difference that is. And the average sold to original list price ratio is 100.4%. So that means homes are selling above contract price. And that's because there are so many multiple offers on many listings. Yes, yeah. yes that's, that's <clears throat> true, there are. And when you have multiple listings, some of those contingencies that Lauren mentioned earlier are kind of left out of a contract because there are so many people wanting to purchase the same home. So in order to make their contract more attractive, they start reducing some of the contingencies that they're putting into the contract. Lauren, do you want to go into that a little bit? I do, I do. <clears throat> so it, it's a really hard time to be a buyer right now. Um, interest rates are incredibly low, so it, it's a great time to be a buyer. But we are seeing, you know, like Pat mentioned, multiple offers, and buyers are having to do things to make their offers a little more creative, to make their offers stand out above the next. So what we are, so say a year ago or more than a, year, or a little over a year ago before COVID, we would never probably recommend that a buyer waive a home inspection. But in this market right now, we are seeing in order to be competitive, we are seeing buyers who are willing to waive home inspections. It's kind of a hard conversation to have with a buyer. Um, we always recommend a home inspection, but if you want to be competitive in, in certain circumstances and depending on, you know, it, it, it it's kind of, it's tough. It's it tough. And like I said, it's a hard conversation, but it may be something to consider. It's not the right option for everybody, but when you're looking at 10 plus offers on a home, you really have to find some ways to be creative. In this market, we are also seeing where buyers are willing to pay above above appraisal price on a home. So say the home goes under contract for 325, but it doesn't appraise for the 325. 
maybe the buyer has submitted an addendum that looks like, you know, something like they're willing to pay $10,000 above appraised price not to exceed the contract price. So there's, there's definitely some creative things that you can do to make your, your offer stand out, but they're hard conversations that we're having with our buyers. They really are. We used to say that we would have a buyer consultation to understand a buyer's needs and desires before we go looking at homes so that we make sure that we're doing the right thing for the buyer. But now it's a strategy session, it truly it is. is. And that is what makes it so difficult, especially for first time home buyers who've not been through this process before. It can really be overwhelming. <clears throat> and I do want to touch real quickly uh, or expand a little bit on what Lauren said about waiving home inspections. So typically in a contract, a contract is or is not um, contingent upon a home inspection. If there is a home inspection contingency, it can be one to negotiate repairs or a second option really is for informational purposes only. <clears throat> Excuse me, in this market though, both of those are being waived by many buyers. If someone chooses a home inspection for informational purposes only, it means you can have a home inspection, but you're telling the buyer that, or excuse me, you're telling the seller that you're not going to be asking them for any repairs. You're simply going to understand how the home works and what you're getting into. Absolutely, absolutely. So, well, I, I have to have to be honest with our viewers. We're having a little bit of a technical difficulty. I cannot see for some reason um, if there are, are any viewers watching or if anybody has questions. So hopefully our marketing manager is, is, is watching this as well and he can peek in the room real quick and, and, and help us with that. So if there's any questions there, we will, we will get to them in a minute. Sorry, we just can't see them right now. No. <clears throat> so let's talk about some other contingencies then. So in addition to home inspection contingency, there's often, if there's financing, then there is an appraisal contingency. And if a home does not appraise, oops, okay. If a home- He just, he just came in to help us out real quick, sorry. Okay. okay. <clears throat> if a home does not appraise, then that is part of the financing contingency and there are a couple of options. So one of the options is, well, there are several options. The buyer can say, I'm okay with the fact that the home does not appraise because I'm putting enough money down that it is over the threshold that the lender requires and I'm good with that. I know it doesn't appraise, but we're okay. I'm okay with that. <clears throat> or number two, the buyer says, I'm not willing to pay any more than the appraised value. So let's say again that the contract sales price was 300, the appraisal comes in at 290. So the buyer can request that the seller reduce this contract price to 290 or the buyer will not move forward. Or another option is there's a negotiation and the buyer and the seller agree to something in between. If no agreement can be made, then the buyer absolutely can walk away and not purchase the house. Correct, it's one of those contingencies that that we mentioned that just the, is the difference between active under contract and pending. Yep. One of the things um, I would say that we're seeing, I'm not seeing it as much right now, but a few months ago, we were seeing some low appraisals and it is difficult for the appraisers to keep up with the increase in value that we're seeing in homes, especially with so many homes receiving multiple offers and going way above contract price. So appraisers really are bound to what has sold. So when you write a contract, let's say you write a contract <clears throat> on a property January 1, and it is not closing until March 1. The appraiser is doing the appraisal 
before March 1. So he cannot use the data for any other properties that have just recently sold because he doesn't have that information yet to use them as comparables. So that is why there's a lag in the appraisals keeping up with the newer values. But we are seeing them. They're, they're, they're doing a little better. Like Pat mentioned, we, we did see several that came in a little low. And those, of course, were, were difficult conversations on both sides. But we negotiated through them and, and everything moved forward and we went to settlement. But, but we are seeing the appraisals, you know, keeping up with the current market right now. <clears throat> so... Well, you know, something that I have really enjoyed um, living in Lake of the Woods um, every summer is the concerts at the Point. Yes. And last year, we didn't get to enjoy the concerts at the Point, but I think Pat has an update for us on how they're going to look this year. I absolutely do, and I am so excited about this, but I've got to grab my phone so I don't give any misinformation here. <laughs> So bear with me for one second. Okay. You're getting us live. <laughs> <clears throat> yes, we are absolutely live. Okay, so the first concert is in May. All of the concerts are the fourth Friday of the month, and they are from 7 to 9.30 p.m. May through August. Now, this is different from the music on the point, or excuse me, not on the point, but on the deck that often happens at the clubhouse on Fridays and on some Saturday nights as well. So in May, our first concert of the year, the Lioness will be the acting as hospitality committee. So they'll be doing a fundraiser for the Lioness Club and the band is Unchained. Then in June, Friends of Lake of the Woods or Flo, who is raising money for, oh my gosh, I can't remember. Um, I'll come back to you with that. I just can't think of it at the moment. Anyway, um, they're raising money for one of our committees, and they will be the hospitality committee for that concert with Reunion. Then in July, Fire and Rescue will be the hospitality committee, and the band is Deja Vu. It's a new band that we've not had before. <clears throat> Excuse me. Sorry. And then in August, Low Link will be the hospitality committee and the band is Island Jerry. We've had every year and everyone truly enjoys that as well as all of our bands. We've had really great bands and it's a wonderful time. If you want to bring your own food, you are welcome to do so. If you want to eat at the clubhouse, you can do that as well. If you want to stay out on your boat and enjoy the concert, that's another way to do it. That's just really a wonderful free event for the community and it absolutely allows some of our really great 5013 C's to raise money for great causes. As far as Fire and Rescue is concerned, this is also their 50th anniversary, so I love the fact that they're going to be able to do a fundraiser as well. So whether you're coming by land or by sea to, <laughs> <laughs> to watch the concerts, I know uh, we have enjoyed the concerts from, from both places, whether it's packing a dinner like, like Pat mentioned and bringing your chairs and kind of setting up a little spot and you know enjoying the music or coming up on your boat. So typically you can't park right there at the point when you're on the water. Uh, but Lake Patrol kind of blocks some of that area off and you can anchor your boat right on the point and sit and, and enjoy the music that way. We've, we've enjoyed it both ways. So we're really looking forward to starting to get back to a little bit of normalcy and getting outdoors and, and seeing people. So it, it's a great time. I highly recommend if you, if you haven't uh, come up and participated to give it a try. Absolutely. If you have any questions about real estate, certainly you are more than welcome to reach out to us. We are in the Food Lion Shopping Center between CVS and AT&T. Our phone number is at the office, 540-388-2541. We are always here from 9 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and certainly on the weekends as well, but by appointment only, unless an agent happens to be in the office working. 
So please stop by and say hello. Yeah. We're happy to answer your questions. Thank you so much for, for joining us today. I don't think we have any questions uh, in the chat box. If we do and we've missed them, we will we will respond individually to you with that with that answer. But thank you so much for for joining us and we will be back here next Tuesday at eleven. I'm not sure who's on the, the schedule for next week, but they'll be ready to answer your questions. And if you think of anything, if you haven't watched today at eleven and you're going back and watching the recording and there's anything that you would like us to discuss for next week, just put it in the comments and we will get to it then as well. Sounds great, and we hope that we will see you on Saturday for our shred event. So come looking for a dog, come <laughs> with your paper, and enjoy some food. And Kona Ice is going to be donating um, some profits from their sales to Fire and Rescue as well. Oh, so we look great. forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.